Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to OS World Cup 2021. We have seen an excellent morning of some very hype matches, and we are back for some more incredible action. We're going to be seeing France taking on Finland in the next match block. I am this one guy, and I will be joined for this cast by none other than everyone's favorite Matt Pooler, OMG Fours himself. Hello, Fours. How's it going? Hello, I'm doing fine. Uh, last minute preparations for the map pool, but we've got some matches to commentate, so they'll have to wait a bit. But otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the rest of the matches today, and uh, we'll see how they end up being. France's Finland is going to be an interesting one, but I would bet my money on France. What do you think, Dick? Yep, uh, definitely agreeing there. I think uh, the, the French roster this year is... One of the strongest we've seen out of them in uh, in quite some time. You know, they they bring in Ekoro this year, who has a lot of hype around him for how well he's been playing uh, in community tournaments over the past several months. You've got you know kind of their standard core players year in year out, like Musty the Poon, Nero, and so on. Uh, I think this roster is very very strong. They're going to be good early round. They're going to scale well into right into the late round as well. Um, but I think, you know, Finland, especially in an early round stage like this, is not a team that uh, you can overlook. I think they are definitely uh, able to contend at least a couple of points here. They've got some strong players on that roster as well. Uh, guys like Ataraxia, Hades, Hankseli, and so on. Um, I think they'll put up a good fight. I think it should be a uh, fun match. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope that uh, we won't have, we won't see any um, duplicate or replications of the qualifier um, results because those seem are very heavily in France's favor. So in, in that case, I hope that the easier pool is gonna allow them to get way better form, way FCs or just four-way um, scores in general, so they can put up uh, a good fight. But otherwise, yeah, um, Finland is gonna be on the back burner here. We'll see how many points, or maybe if they can even win the match. Yeah, I think. One thing that is always very interesting to look at is that difficulty scaling change. Um, you know, you see the qualifier pools typically kind of scaling up to somewhere around a quarterfinals, um, you know, kind of in between quarterfinals, semifinal difficulty, um, which means some of the teams that maybe are very good early round but fall off earlier than others can kind of eke by in the qualifiers, but then can do actually pretty well um, in that round of 32, round of 16 pool. So the, the showing could be a little different. Like you said, you know, Finland looked okay, but not great in qualifiers. And they qualified, what, I believe, 23rd seed. Um, so clearly, you know, the scaling is not quite there to match a team like France. But, uh, you know, you drop that star rating down a little bit, um, and, and maybe uh, things open up a little bit. You know, they'll have a little bit of uh, some, some opportunities for maps that they can do better on that they wouldn't have in, uh, in the qualifier stage. I believe we are getting set up here. I think there was a little issue with our lobby name, so things are getting fixed in there. Um, it does appear that they already have been through their ban phase. Uh, Finland banning first, getting rid of Nomad 1. France very good at aim, no surprise there. Uh, France banning out Hidden 1, so Bubble Flower, that kind of very mixed rhythm and everything map. The, uh, the ban for... Yeah, that's actually not a big surprise, at least for the Nomad 1, because they got outperformed by 1.5 million points on one <laughs> run on Nomad 1, which is quite substantial for something that doesn't have any mods and no mod multipl no multiplier, so yeah, um, doesn't surprise me there. The Hidden 1 ban, I, I can see it if you don't have a confident roster on that, it's so easy to miss and you can just have almost no FCs because it's uh, very underrated. Yeah, I, I like this hidden one a lot. I think it fills that slot super well with kind of a, a variety of um, patterns and map styles getting thrown at you. Um, but it does look like France is going to opt into first pick here. And they're going to go into DT3. So maybe looking into some kind of uh, finger control mechanics here to start things off. Uh, I like this map. I think it's pretty cool. Half slashed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, it's a little half heaven. slashed map. Gonna be uh, the style of a tradition, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's like when I think of half slash, the only thing that I can think is just is just Toho. I mean, that's his his calling card. Yeah, name a better tool. <laughs> <laughs> so looks like we are gonna get started here. It's gonna be Poon, Snorlax, Musty, Just Man, with Amethetic, Hades, Bolex, and Zeppe on France's first pick here, looking uh, to begin. You know, maybe a good run here in OWC for them as they get a couple early breaks out of Finland, start things off on the right foot for France. 
Yeah, but uh, no one won was banned because there was a 1.5 million difference. Guess what the other 1.5 million <laughs> difference in points <laughs> map was? Well, it was DT2, which is pretty much this one, but a bit harder. Yeah, so, I, you know, the, the, the feeling there then, I think, is France gonna try to opt into mechanics because based on those qualifier results, that's what they were a lot stronger than Finland on. Um, so we'll have to see what kind of stuff Finland will look towards as they've already broken all four of their full combos. France still has three alive. Uh, so this one is gonna get out of hand in a hurry. This is not a long map, it's only two minutes and it's already up to a 200,000 plus point lead. Yeah, so far solid three uh, wave C from France which could very well stay until the end, mostly because there's not anything new except for maybe the slider where we did see some people break on. Uh, just be aware of that slider and you should be fine if you do have the stamina for this. But yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a 1 million point difference at the end of the map. But Amesthetic did break, the slider is coming up, no breaks yet, alright. Yeah, nobody broke on the, on the slider, but uh, that's a big lead there. For, for France, I would say this one is uh, safely in the bag for them. It's uh, a very solid first pick. The accuracy leaving a little bit to be desired for France, but uh, in this matchup it's not going to be an issue of, of accuracy battles. It's going to be uh, having several big combos, maybe an FC or two. Okay, two misses at the end. Musty missed twice and Snorlax also missed once, but it wasn't enough because, as you said, the map is pretty short. And there we go, we have uh, one C by the Poon only. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, like you said, the unfortunate late misses there. Must do with two, Snorlax with one, Justman with an early break. Um, but didn't end up mattering. The 640k dropping down pretty far from Emesthetic. Unfortunately, Zeppe down below 800k as well. On these early round DTs, I think those are not the scores that players would like to see, unfortunately, for them. But uh, it was the first pick from France, so kind of to be expected there. And they take the quick 1-0 lead. All right, how is Finland going to answer? Um, they did have a solid hard work roster in general. Um, it's more, more focused towards the CS6.5 on, on things rather than uh, the uh, jumpy hard work one. I can I... also potentially see them go for DT2 or DT1. Yeah, I, I could see this being a hard rock 2 angle for them, like you said. Uh, their best score on, in the qualifiers was on the 6.5 pick, so maybe a team that, you know, likes precision, likes that small circle stuff. Um, my other thought, you know, like I was saying, maybe if you're Finland, you try to avoid mechanics against this very strong mechanic France team. So that means, you know, going into something like a Nomad 3 or 4, um, those types of maps more so than, you know, the ones of the pools, as it were, which are going to be more aim-focused, or something like a Nomad 2 or 5, which is going to be, you know, that kind of speed skill set. You know, some things I could imagine to also be a decent avenue is the free mods, because those weren't quite present in, uh, in the qualifier, so they could maybe go for something uh, slightly outlandish, but they will go for the Nomad 5, it's kind of an extension of uh, DT2 for the spe for speed, just a bit more aim and a bit more spacing all around. So I guess this is the closest to DT1 in the qualifiers if they really want it to be. Yeah, and that's interesting because you know I was thinking maybe that's you know tapping maps are, are the thing to avoid here for Finland, but they're gonna jump right in. Uh, I mean. You can't really straight up compare this DT3 with this Nomad 5 to much more of a uh, straight stamina speed than, than the DT3 was. So, you know, maybe this falls better into Finland's skill set. Another short one, too. I, I am a big fan of uh, the, the map links in this pool. <laughs> it's a, uh, There's a, quite a few nice and, nice and short, concise picks. This one, minute 53, minute 54. Which, uh, you know, just long enough to kind of give you that early taste of a of what, you know, later speed picks will probably bring, but short enough that you're not going to be exhausted on stamina too easily. Well, yeah, there's, there's always uh, the uh, underrated uh, difficulty of just a longer pick. If this map was just extended for one more minute, it might even be potentially around a 16 difficulty. Just the length of maps is uh, really uh, driving home the difficulty on some of the maps. And uh, it's way easier to concentrate for two minutes than for four minutes, which <laughs> shouldn't uh, need any further clarification, but yeah. Um, 
if Finna think, think they can focus really hard for two minutes and get a win on this one, well, let's see them uh, execute on it. Yeah, this, this map is uh, pretty approachable. I mean, it's only 240 BPM, so it's not excessively fast. And I think that there's a, a, a decent amount of relatively free combo in it as well. There's, I think, like kind of two longer, more difficult sections. But other than that, doesn't throw too much raw difficulty at you. There's, you know, the triple and quint sections, but, you know, baby's first Nomad 5, as, as suits uh, a round of 32 pool. Yeah, one thing I can see people miss on are there are some bursts where under the last note of the burst there's a bit of a break and then a slider or a note. So if you tap one note too many, you're gonna miss. Just yeah. Slight thing in control required. Just I, enough I, so you know the big here. I noted that down to myself when I was doing research on these maps. Like, oh, there's these little, like, one fourth gaps in a couple of places that can be easy enough to trip up on if your finger control isn't quite on point. So we will see if that affects any of the players. Do a couple of uh, player changes, get a Coro coming in, for instance, from the front side. But most players look to be very comfortable at the uh, beginning. Ooh. That is going to be a break from Just Man, though. First FC gone for France. Finland gonna take the lead here on their own first bet. And Finland is matching France's accuracy, I, I think, blow for blow right now. Yeah, it's looking pretty good for them. 99s on Amacetic and Hades, just below 99 on Hexeli. Bullet slightly behind on accuracy, but uh, the Puna is down under 98 as well, so not, uh, not a big difference there. This is going to be just that couple hundred combo difference. It's about 300 combo from the FCs back to Just Man, and we're already coming towards the end. I mean, there's only, what, about a quarter of the map left to go. This lead seems to be tenable here for Finland, looking to pull off the early point here. Would you like to see teams starting with a little bit of momentum on their own first selection? But there is a late break from Hank Selly. That could be a difference maker, but Musty trades it back, fortunately. So France will not be able to take advantage. And there go Poon and Okoro. Did they just both entirely miss the same burst? They did, they did. Oh, man. I think All they right. just overfought the uh, the overlap. That was one of the overlaps. And yeah, another overlap. Okoro missed on that one too. And Harless missed on that one. Okay. Now that, uh, that escalated quickly. That is a very good point from Finland. The... Uh, what is that? I believe Triple FC coming out from Amacetic uh, Bolex. Hades may have had a slider break like right at the yeah, end. Yeah, right at the enough. end. He, he missed pretty much the, 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 the last uh, slider of the map. Yeah. But that's a very good, uh, that's a very good pick and a very good point from, from Finland. And uh, winning so handily, so comprehensively on a Nomad 5 makes you think that maybe that DT2 remains an option for them as well. So they've already got maybe their next pick kind of in mind, regardless of what France does here. And uh, that's a good early uh, start to the match, you know, the quick 1-1. One, one. Nobody uh, able to establish themselves in the lead. And now France with a decision to be made for what they'd like to go into for their second pick. I mean, Fra France on the other hand does have a lot of options to go for here. Um, if they really want to double down on DT2, they can. I don't think the reason why they lost is purely because of the speed and the tapping, but mostly because of the type of map it was, uh, missing uh, and just maybe mind blocking on some of the overlaps and then overthinking how many times you have to burst and then you just missed before the overlap and that happened to two people on the same overlap. Um, DT2 in, on the other end is way more low spaced, so it could be an avenue of attack but you know, maybe Scar from the Nomad 5 don't want to go for it, that's completely understandable. They still have stuff like uh, the Nomad 4, uh, the attack map in Nomad, I can definitely see them go for that. Or just any, even Hidden 2 if they truly want to. I'm curious if Hidden 2 ends up being picked in this match. I don't I don't really characterize either of these teams with uh, like low AR prowess, and it's going to be another DT, so we're just uh, going to see France sticking in that same pool. They go over to the double time 1 pick, so we're going to see Harukaze dance, which is, uh, again, you know, kind of that staple DT1, mostly, you know, fairly comfortable aim. Um, which is something that France is very, very strong on, as we've said. So I think this is a pretty logical type of pick from them. And I uh, expect good scores on this map, I think. I still can't get over how high of a star rating this map has, and everyone still thinks it's balanced. 
it's what, 6.57? Yeah. It's, it, it's interesting. Yeah, it is the highest star rating in the pool by, like, point one or something, and that's compared to Hard Rock 2, which is also, like, weirdly high star rating. Yeah, I already it, it, noticed uh, some weird Hard Rock 2 uh, small circle shenanigans when last year in finals our Hard Rock 2 was essentially 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 stars higher than normal one, and it was fine. Yeah, I, uh, I think we can kind of just chalk that one up to the star rating system, not really knowing what to do with certain skill sets compared to others. It's very easy to look at a at a basic, you know, like a, an aim map or a stream map and say, okay, that star rating makes sense, but like tech or alt or small circles, you just don't know what uh, the system's going to say about it. Yeah, and, and this, this one, one, the higher the star rating, the more genuinely raw difficult it should be. So according to that, this one should have a decent amount of speed and aim mixed into it with the high star rating. So just a raw aim, raw skill set test here. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is what you like to see for uh, for DT ones. Much more straightforward than uh, something like a hidden one, for example, this week, or even a little more straightforward than the hard rock one. Very comfy sort of aim style, but got to be able to play the 247 and a half BPM. Right, please playing. don't round up or down, otherwise <laughs> you might have some offset issues. <laughs> Yes, that's true. It's always funny to me to look at those half BPMs, but players obviously not having any trouble with that uh, until the break from Apiceto. So, one miss from Finland here going to the first key eye. Francis try to take a little bit of the lead. Still low combo, so not a lot of score on the board yet. And Poon hit kill! Oh. Okay! A double break for France. That's yeah. not good. Th that would. This is, this is pretty much why I thought that Finland could maybe go for this one, because this is pretty similar to DT1, which Finland actually on one run outperformed France on. Hey, yeah, I don't... I don't know that I personally expect to see what's happening to France happening to France here, as Storlax breaks as well. Uh, France down to a grand total of 1 FC against the double FC from Ataraxia and Hades over on Finland. That early round consistency coming in clutch for Finland as Justman breaks as well. No FCs left. This is looking like a very possible break point here for Finland as Ataraxia and Hades looking very comfortable. To see what happens in this PI section. Everybody looking good. They make it right through. That is a big lead. Finland at almost 500k to the good. Just the last quarter of the map to come. Not a lot France can do here. Yeah, um, th this, despite looking at the qualifier results, I didn't expect France to just crumble on this map. Yeah, this is this is a really unexpected showing. Uh, there is a break from Ataraxia. I believe that was on that buzz slider. Was uh, easy enough to just slightly miss tap on those, but it's not going to affect the outcome at this point. This is a humongous lead. Finland are going to take the first break point of this match, and it's not even going to be close. This is nearly a million points that they're going to win on France's selection, and they will have their own pick to come. That feels good if you are this Finnish side. Starting off the match with a quick break point on the second pick from France, the ability now to pick and go up 3-1 after, uh, what was it, a 922,000 point win. Well, well, well. All right, that's, uh, I mean, so far, I would say, um, pretty good performance by Finland on this one, especially. Um, France might have just been an, I don't know, something happened there. Maybe everyone at the same time just kind of missed the stars aligned, which helps Finland, obviously. Um, hopefully, they'll uh, get right back into it for the next few maps. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, France, I mean, we think of them as a very strong mechanics and a very strong aim team, but their aim looked to be kind of what let them down a little bit on both of those maps, like you were talking about on uh, on Nomad 5, you know, mis-aiming on a couple of those bursts on DT1, mis-aiming on just some basic aim patterns. So they're going to have to rethink their approach to this match a little bit. Fortunately for them, possibly, um, not a lot of aim left in the pool, but Finland now taking their time on this pick because this is pretty important with that two to one lead with that break point in their back pocket 
they will want to consolidate that, so they've got to find their best pick here, try to take that 3-1 lead, really put the pressure on France. Um, based on what we've seen so far, do you think do you think maybe the DT2 comes out, or do you think they go somewhere else? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually playing around with the idea of maybe going for the DT2, but uh, mostly because of a different reason. Um, because of their form and roster for a DT2, uh, would most likely include the pool who got a 94% accuracy, I think, FC on DT3. So, I don't know, that, 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 should, that just seems to me, maybe he's not warmed up, so you can maybe ad take advantage of that and go for the DT2. They will, however, opt for the Hidden 2, which I expected more France to maybe go for, because uh, generally I see few FCs on this one, and Echo is really comfortable not pushing a Hidden. And he's also the, the standard player for the qualifiers on both Hiddens. So he'll probably be the driving force for the carry here and they'll probably get supported by his team. Yeah, I I do agree. I think Ikoro is a scary guy to go against um, on anything that kind of... Anything in general. I mean, the dude's just really good. Uh, but especially on some of the lower right pro train gimmickier maps. Um, what's, what's a little scary to me, though, is uh, if France can't put together an, an optimal four-man roster, which I don't know how great you know kind of their fill players are going to be for Airy, that does put a lot of pressure on Okoro. And he did put out a tweet a little bit ago talking about you know kind of some of his nerves going in because the expectations for him this year are so high. So if you come into a map that he's you know kind of their expected carry for, those nerves might get a little bit worse. And Finland kind of playing with house money here. I don't think many people favor them in this matchup. So they're kind of going out with nothing to lose, and they can just come in and, and just kind of play Osu, you know? They're just coming into clicks and circles. Um, much less pressure on their side in an underdog match like this. So uh, the nerves maybe will uh, be expected to affect them less. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a very good point, because I, I, I also always remember back in uh, when I played tournaments, sometimes your picking strategy might not be optimal because of the players and how they feel on the day. Uh, if you look back at what France picked, they picked DT1. And they, I think they didn't have Ekro in for the lobby. So maybe Ekro is just not feeling uh, very confident in himself right now, which is why they will opt to pick for something that for other people outside of Ekro could play. Yeah, and one other um, thing that I'm looking at a little bit too, uh, you mentioned you know the Poon coming in and having a little lower act. I took a look back through the three maps we've played so far. The Poon has gotten the worst act in the lobby on all three maps they've played so far. Which, for a player of his stature, we know what he's capable of. We know how good he is and how high his skill cap is. That's a little bit concerning if you're France, to have your, on paper, best player performing below his standards and below the expectations for what he needs to do. Um, so both Ekoro with the nerves and the Poon underperforming a little bit to start off this match. With it only being a best of nine, Finland, I think, really wants to jump on that quickly here and take advantage of that little bit of underperformance. Um, because, you know, they only need three more maps, and if they can pick some shorter stuff and find uh, some good wins, you know, this will uh, be untenable for France in a very fast sort of fashion. So we're going to go into Hidden 2, and uh, we're going to see what happens on this very classic hidden aim-based area hidden that Mirage Della style that everybody knows and loves. Yeah, do you rem remember the old maps and how, how fun they were to play with all the patterns and the symmetry? And you think of uh, Dallas, and now you think of a modern Mirage for like all the appropriate tournament hints you see. And well, here we have the best of both worlds. Uh, let's see how they will fare on this. Yeah, I'm I'm very curious. You know, we did um, the preview stream for this tournament and discussed Finland being a team that has players who are really good at early round consistency, kind of across the board in terms of skill set. Um, and they're looking to prove that so far, and we do get the early break there from Thundor on the France side. Ataraxia, though, does trade it back, uh, but so far that consistency is working out. Hades holding the only SS in the lobby for the first 300 or so combo as well. So it's going to be a very, very closely fought thus far. We're going to have to see some breaks to really differentiate those scores, because everybody looking pretty comfortable, as expected, Akoro doing well for himself, Boone picking that act back up as well as Nero matching the FCs on their side. Let's break from Amacetic. Okay. France looking for the break back. Alright. Uh, that was a misread of the overlaps from Amacetic. He seems to be still on point with the same. Hopefully he'll keep his combo up. 
Uh, we will get right into the solo and then the second Ki and there's gonna be a few misses here potentially because of the amount of squares. Yeah, this this style of aim and the patterns in this, I mean, like you said, there, there's the squares, there's some linear aim. If you're just not really on point with that aim, with your, you know, your cursor control aim, you have some problems in this map, pretty simple, but, Ooh. you know, no big discomfort. Oh, there goes Poon. I don't know if you're a second of those. No, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> just seeing I'm a set explosive. Oh, okay, okay, okay. As if it, <laughs> I'm, and I'm, I'm a bit scared because oh, there was also just missed. Okay, wait a second here. This can come back at the last quarter. There's time left. Akoro is the only remaining full combo for France. Amacetic repeatedly breaking, but they still have the FCs on Hades and Bullocks. They still have a big combo on Ataraxia. This can come back here at the ending for Finland if they're able to hold on. Any break for France could spell their doom on this map, but they are clinging to a 10, about 100k lead. It is coming down at the end. Hades still holding the SS. Will that be enough? It may be enough to pull the score over, but a late break from Amacetic is... Oh, it's going to come to the last few notes of the map, and it's not going to be enough. France clings to the lead and manages to hold on by 61k, despite the SS from Hades and the backing full combo from Bolex. Just unfortunate for Finland that Amacetic score did not end up being where they needed it to be. And the Koro with the FC managing to do enough thanks to the pretty solid backing scores. And France take the break point right back. That was about as close as it gets. All right, Fra France's performance, kind of what you would probably would have expected, like the one misses here and there, but like still 700 to 800 K points, a lot of points, but it makes sense why Finland picked this. Hades getting the SS, if you're that comfortable with this map, and with the ending, uh, with the sliders, it's so easy to get a 100 there, and you still hold an SS through that, it's gonna be really comfortable on this one, or practice this one a lot. So the pick makes strategically a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I, I definitely don't fault them for picking that map. It was clearly... Um, you know, it, it, it literally was just a difference of one player having a couple fewer breaks. Um, I think that may as well be the first SS we've seen in the tournament so far? Somebody can, somebody can check on that for me, but that might be the, the first SS um, of the league. It wouldn't surprise me, yeah. Okay. At the very least on, on that map or on Hidden in general. Uh, I mean, great performance by him and it's, I mean, it's e totally even right now. Break points were traded, but I mean, there's plenty of maps left to be picked, and I'm really interested to see how Fremont might end up looking like. Well, not gonna get to see any free mod quite yet. We're gonna go Hard Rock 1, France gonna return to that kind of aim type of mapping that we kind of expect out of them and we have confirmation that was the first SS of this round so congratulations to Hades. I feel like that should be like that could be a cool little prediction tournament type of thing. Who will, who will achieve the first SS or what match will, will have the first SS of the round um, on or what map. That'd be kind of a cool thing to do. Um, but yeah, this is going to be Mushikui Psychedelic Rhythm, the pick here from France. Hard Rock 1. No surprise from that team. No, three minute map. Consistency to them. BPM has plenty of bursts and jumps. Yeah. It's just all around has everything you really want with a bit of linear aim. Uh, so a bit of like old patterning in here, so you can definitely miss on those even though the spacing is pretty low. Kind of slightly, very slightly reminiscent of Hidden 2 and some of these linear patterns, but way more comfortable to read and it's way easier to just go complete caveman mode, see circle, click circle. Yeah. Don't even think about it because <laughs> it's a perfect turn. Yeah, this is uh, really just... It's testing base mechanics much more than uh, anything else. I I like the uh, excuse me. I like the kind of the inclusion of a, a little bit of an older style aim map here. Um, it's, it's nice, you know. It's something that we don't always see. A lot of the times, the hard rock ones are kind of these more modern, you know, sky flame or similar types of picks. This one uh, harkens back several years. Everybody, uh, I think, has a soft spot in their hearts for RLC mapping. Um, this is a very fair test of uh, aim. A couple of triples and bursts, you know, it's a little bit higher BPM than the other aim maps in uh, the Nomad Hidden Pools. 
Yeah, and, and if, if you do have a soft spot for these hover ones, then uh, I think you're in luck for the rest of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I, I look forward to the map pool showcases to see what we're going to be getting. Um, it'll, be, it'll be always a always a cool one. I think there's uh, something to be said for that that particular slot. Looks like we are, I think, set to go here. We got Musty Hifkel Poon and Just Man for France. Apiceto, Ataraxia Zeppe, and Hades for Finland. After the traded break points, teams back on even footing at two points apiece. So all of you out there with 5-2 in your pickums one way or another, uh, well, hope that somebody can win three points in a row. And uh, we'll see as we go into Hard Rock 1 on uh, this No Skip Sunday. I mean, sometimes you got to enjoy this song, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a rhythm game after all. Players don't want to skip. Players want to get their grips ready for the map, and uh, it seems to be that's the case for everyone except for Xepe. Yeah, just a little bit of an early break for him, but maybe the worst. And uh, it's going to start off with a very small France lead. But this is going to be the longest map we will have played to this point, over three minutes for the first time in this match on map number five. This is that type of map that, you know, I think breaking almost anywhere kind of feels bad. It's not like there's a clearly defined diff spike per se. It's a relatively consistent type of pick. So trying to keep up that aim consistency over the link is going to be the name of the game. So far, everybody having a good time. It is seven full combos and one very near full combo. That of Zeppe, about 20 combo behind us all. Yeah, one thing I'm wondering though is if the Poon has some uh, setup issues because he keeps getting really low accuracy on stuff, which arguably should be pretty easy to get accuracy on if you're a veteran harder player, which he is. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just getting 100s all around. Yeah, I mean, other than Amacetic on the last map, he has still gotten the worst act out of everybody on every map so far. So it is maybe something going on with this computer setup. That is a traded break from Hipkill and Episeto. No real damage done either direction. We have Boon down at 97%. I mean, you look around the lobby at the accuracy and everybody else must be still holding the SS. Just Man and Hipkill up at 99.5, 99.6. I mean, I, I don't, I'm a little concerned for the Boon's act. As long as he can keep the combo up though, that's gonna be the most important part. He is doing yes, that. Yes, all about combo gaming. No, no major breaks. I mean, it's really just that trade. France with a small lead, but this is staying quite close here. It's going to come into the last PI looking like about dead even. Only, what, 54,000 points between the teams. So that's one break anywhere. No pressure here, guys. A lot on the line. Look at somebody looking to take a 3-2 to two lead. But if it holds as... We are seeing so far, it looks like France are going to maintain this advantage. Just with that small combo lead for him kill over Apiceto. Oh, oh but Boon does find a break finally, as does Justman. Oh, that is two breaks at the worst possible time. Apiceto finds a miss, but the triple FC still intact for Finland. They're going to close this out. And that's going to be another break point. Wow. The mechanics letting France down. Musty Justman, Boon all breaking in the last key eye. Ataraxia Hades Zeppe saying thank you very much. We will take that. And a third straight break point leaves Finland in a 3 to 2 lead. I don't know. Finland just seems to be so much more comfortable on these uh, easier maps compared to the showcase. And it, it, it definitely shows. I mean, the freeway is C on this map. I mean, okay, Seipei did get a really early slider break. Let's not call that one. I mean, he's got over oh, 1 million points. I mean, yeah, I would call 16 it an FC. 16 combo in. I'm just going to say it's an FC. No, he could have missed 16 slider ends. You don't That's know. Exactly. <laughs> 16 slider ends despite having less than 1600s. But we'll go, for, we'll go with that. I mean, just really good performance by Finland, I would say. France is uh, underperforming, I would say, slightly. But Finland is overperforming quite a bit. Or at least maybe that's... That's just how they usually perform on this pool. I, I think it's a little bit of the latter. I, I, I really do think that Finland is quite strong on an early pool like this. Their consistency, you know, they're all 
very experienced tournament players who, you know, you've seen a lot of these guys in like four digit tournaments where this sort of difficulty of map, you're going to see that every, every time. Um, and so they're just coming in and doing what they need to do. And, and France, man, I, I don't know what just happened to them on that pick. That was very strange. Um, that they just kind of fell apart in that last KI. And like we've been saying, I wonder, the Poon's got to be having like some computer issues or something. I don't really know um, necessarily the, the cause, but you don't expect a guy of his, uh, like him to get 96 ack on a map like that. I mean, it's just yeah. un really unexpected. If, um, if, if you get a 90% accuracy like Musty and you miss once, that's kind of expected. You miss on the combo, you get a good accuracy, but low accuracy mostly seems to be an underlying problem. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from Finland either. Like we said, they are playing very, very well on in this match so far. Um, this this pool seems to be suiting them quite well, doing uh, doing a pretty good job. But uh, three straight break points. Um, Finland going to go into the first of our free mods. It's going to be free mod one. Going to see if somebody can finally win their own pick here. And it would give them a match point if they were able to do so. So this one very important now. The last, uh, last two picks of this match are going to be... Key. Absolutely key. And Tsukiyomi is going to be the starting point for that. Yeah, I mean, another two minute map. Uh, short and spicy for all of these uh, players involved. Um, I mean, we already saw three people have seen pretty much on Hard Rock 1, which I would say is not. Is, is, I, I, it's, it's a distant cousin of this map, let's put it that way. It's <laughs> not quite closely related, but it is a distant cousin. <laughs> More so than a random stranger on, on the street. And, uh, <laughs> you, I mean, you saw two people uh, seeing on Hint 2, and one of them assessing, and you saw, so they have comfortable reading and hidden players. Then you also see the good performance on Hard Rock. I think Fremont, they could probably just go for two mods or something, but I would say the just judging by how France performed so far, it's not down to a 4 or a C. So you probably choose on both teams, you take the one mod each and the no mod twice, and just go for the 4 or a C in that case. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's definitely the most likely. Um, I think you probably see maybe Musty Hard Rock and Thunder, I guess, on Hidden, and then let Puna and Justman run the Nomad. Um, for Finland? Not actually sure. Well, we're loading in anyway, so it's going to be Bolex Hidden Hard Rock okay. and Hades on the Hidden Only. All right, I was one off. It's going to be Musty and, and Poon on Nomad. Justman running Hard Rock Thunder is going to be the Hidden player. Um, so both teams kind of matching little. Yeah, that, that slight over mod for Finland, but I think Hidden Hard Rock on this doesn't seem unreasonable. This map is pretty straightforward. I think either mod can have a good time on it. But they're looking for just that little bit of score advantage. If they expect a lot of FCs, I can definitely understand where Finland's coming from with that uh, that choice. And oh, Thunder no. misreading those back and forths quite badly. That's not how you want to start out. Yeah, I do like the idea of putting Musty on the normal so you can guarantee the uh, FC with a really high accuracy. Justman does miss now, so it's, it is all about the normal FCs right now for France. They are uh, putting all the all the eggs in their carry player baskets. Um, there's the first break going to come out from Finland on Bullocks, that hidden hard rock player. But it's going to be Justman full missing a stream. He dropped all the way down to 92 act. The hard rock not working out very well for him. And it is still a three-way full combo for Finland. They are in a pretty decent spot here. This map is very short, already halfway through. And a greater than 100,000 point lead as they cleanly make their way through those streams into the slightly slower section here. Yeah, I, I would say this map is definitely harder on Hard Rock than on Hidden. Um, at least it was that it was the case for playtesters. So I'm okay with both these Hard Rock players just performing slightly uh, worse in score than the rest of the team, which is what I would expect from this. Uh, but the only thing that matters is Bullock is outperforming just man, and the rest of Finland is also looking really good right now. Yeah, I am consistently very impressed over the course of this match by the performance of these Finnish players. Triple FC on Hank Zelly, Ataraxia, Hades. And there goes Musty, the, the Nomad player breaks for, for France, and that's really gonna just do it. Finland's gonna take this point, and they're gonna take a 4-2 lead. That's gonna be match point in their favor. This is remarkably strong. 
You know, I, I, I said before the match, like, I know Finland can do well in early pools, but I didn't think it was going to be quite this strong from them. Another big victory on their own pick. They win by almost 700k, and that's 4-2 to two, Finland. That's match points. That is France on the back foot and on the edge of being dropped into the loser's bracket much earlier than they would have expected. Yeah, and I mean, if you just close your eyes and ignore the flag and, and, and the team name right now, it I mean, you could tell me this is Joni's performance, and I would probably buy it. <laughs> a free OSC and the Hidden Harrop uh, guy just one slider breaking the map? I mean, insane performance. Yeah, this is... This is really, really impressive just in general. I mean, these scores, like, you could put this up against anybody, and they'd be doing pretty competitive uh, work. And that is a very quick Nomad 2 pick for France, so... You know, we, we, I think we kind of expected this to come out. It, it, there was a, the, the likelihood of this this map showing up eventually. Um, this has been, I think, a closeout map for a couple teams. I feel like we've seen it be the last map of a couple different matches. Uh, but France going to try to use it to kind of claw their way back into this one. They need to win this and get a break point just to send it to tiebreaker. So a lot of pressure now coming in on, these, on this map, which could now be the last map of the match. Um, I mean, just looking at the qualifier results, you see Finland being the underdogs. You look at the past few maps, and you actually see France being the underdog. So the roles have been reversed, and France needs to step up and actually start comboing, because so far they haven't really been doing so. Yeah, France has found a lot of kind of unexpected breaks for their strength of roster. I don't think you really anticipate the kind of misses you're seeing from this team you know whether either there, there's a lot of reasons i suppose we could we could posit for that you know just underperformance or setup problems like we we're talking about with poon or you know, overconfidence coming into a match that they expected to win but whatever the case they need to write that ship and they need to do it as quickly as possible if they want to avoid a very surprising upset here finland as I said before, kind of playing with house money, especially now that they've got that 4-2 to two lead. I mean, this is France's pick, so they can just come in and be like, all right, you know, we'll put in a roster that we think is good for Nomad 2 if we don't win. We still have our own last pick to try and close it out. So this is a very good spot for them to be in. And we're going to be starting. Fun fact, the Nomad 2 and the, qualif uh, the qualifiers, if you take the best performance from Finland against um, the same run uh, of France, they would win by 100k. The other time around, they would lose by 230k. So, for me, this map is pretty much up, up in the air for grabs. Uh, but if you judge the state France is in right now, I would probably bet my money on Finland right now. Yeah, I think I actually can agree with that. You know, n knowing that they had comparable scores in the qualifiers, and knowing that France can be something of an emotional team. I mean, when they get down, <laughs> they can get really down. Um, the the negative, the, the, the tilt, you know, can definitely come out a little bit from France, um, somewhat infamously over the last several years, I suppose. So they've got to really lock it in on this map, you know, play with, uh, play with the score off, you know, play with the leaderboard off, just look at your own screen and... Don't uh, don't think too much about the situation. Just play the map and put forth your best performance. Because if you don't, uh, this uh, match could be coming to an end in a hurry. Yeah, being emotional definitely shows you at least that, that you care. And I'm sure all of these players care as a, a lot about this match and want to perform the best. But sometimes, uh, yeah, um, sometimes you actually lose to yourself. That happened to me plenty of times. <laughs> and Bolex also lost himself right now, missing <laughs> for the first time in the match right now, in the map. Yeah, that'll be the first break of anyone. Fortunately, pretty early on, he's only a few hundred combo behind, but it does give that lead over to France. This, uh, you know, on, on paper, this map looks very comfortable. 184 BPM, not too fast. The streams aren't super long. Uh, there's uh, one or two kind of overlapping streams that can be somewhat tricky to aim. But for the most part, this is just a matter of making sure you're calm and composed. You know, you got, you got that left hand working properly. And so far, seven of the players not having any problems with that. 
Yeah, and this is the Kiai, so this is what people should be expecting to miss. And Hades, the second person to miss in this map, looking really good for France right now. Yeah, th this France roster is very, very strong on Nomad 2s. I, I think that kind of speaks for itself a little bit. Musty Poon, you know, Just Man. Really a, a roster that you would expect to do well on stream maps. Almost surprising that they didn't go into this pick maybe with their previous selection. Um, but, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and there is still a decent amount of map left to go. But another break from Bolex there. That lead is only going to grow for the French side, and they're going to take a 400k lead, or thereabouts, into the last quarter. I've been feeling pretty confident so far. Yeah, Bolex so far only getting one misses here and there, no chain misses, like, oh, Hank Sally just got. Uh, so the Akris are looking really good, but the combos are just missing. I'm a setting also, that's it. That is yeah. the point for France. Yep. All right. Well, France comes out. Nomad 2 pick. They take care of business. Musty still on that SS. Snorlax and Justman with just a couple of 100s each. And uh, France, you know, is going to be saying, hey, Finland, the ball is in your court. You guys have to make your own pick to win this. We're not going to give it to you on a break point. And... That is a great Ooh. performance. A triple FC with just a very late break from the Poon. A huge win. That's the biggest win of the match so far. 1.3 million points. And now it will come down to that last pick from Finland after just a fantastic performance. 1-100 one from Musty, unfortunately, right at the very end. But yeah. France doing what they needed to to uh, keep this match going. At least one more point. Yeah, that's a really good normal 2 performance. Can't really argue about that. Uh, France... This is what you expect on some of the maps, and they did deliver on number 2 finally. But Finland has a pick, and Finland has to make this pick count, otherwise we're going to the tiebreaker. And quite frankly, I'm not sure who's favorite on the tiebreaker. Um, I, I would mostly say France, because it's just a way harder map than the rest of the pool, so it's more reminiscent of qualifiers. But and, it, and it's very aim-focused, so that's something Finland banned on Nomad 1. But, I mean, if France wakes up on the tiebreaker as they did on Nomad 2, I would say that's definitely France's favorite. Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting if we get there. Um, I, I guess we'll, we'll kind of comment on that if, if yeah. we do get to that point, because the pick is in here for Finland. And, uh, you know, we talked about right at the beginning of this match, the fact that Finland looked really good in qualifiers on that small circle size, the Precision CS 6.5 map in qualifiers, that was their best score. And uh, it's going to be that same slot as their last pick here in the match. It's going to be makes me wonder. 6.5. Got some bursts, got some streams, got a little bit of pattern aim. This one, uh, something that Finland feels like is their best chance to close the match out out of the few remaining maps in that pool. Yeah, that's mostly why I was referring to the tiebreaker, because if they want to win this, I think this is the pick to do it. This is where they're most favorite to win it right now. Um, I mean, they do have two chances, but if they want to close it out, I think you got to perform on this one, 100%. Yeah, you, you never want to chance the uh, the tiebreaker, you know, by just kind of throwing away your last pick without without adequate thought put into it. I, I really that would be super suboptimal. Um, yeah. So Finland, this is best foot forward. Look to pull off the upset on Hard Rock Two. We did see, of course, uh, you know, the Hard Rock One a little bit ago that they did win with a near triple FC, a very good performance. But France, you know, came back with a super strong performance on Nomad 2. So... This is going to be a very interesting spot to be in. It's going to be Musty, Snorlax, Poon, and Just Man. It's going to be Bullocks, Ataraxia, Zeppe, Hades. It's going to be eight players who have been performing quite well throughout this match. Poon, I believe, still has not FC to map yet, so he's going to be looking to uh, stop that streak here, maybe get a full combo in to take this to a tiebreaker. Finland... Looking to uh, win another pick of their own to close it out. And we are in to what could be the last map of this match. Or, which 
could be France sending us to a tiebreaker. And we are two minutes and a half away from finding out which of those outcomes it's going to be. All right. Nothing too surprising. It's just jumps and bursts. So slightly reminiscent of, of uh, Harvick 1, just way small circle size. Which, ooh, Bolex and Poon currently trading misses. So for now, uh, ball is still up in the air for grabs. Uh, accuracy, though, is going to be something I'm looking at. Poon at 94%, Snorlax at 95%. Meanwhile, you've got a 98, 299s, and an SS on the side of Finland. So that accuracy is going to carry them in this early portion of the map while the combos are all still pretty much dead even. I suspect we will probably see at least one or two more misses before the map is over. I don't uh, know who they will be, but right now, Finland enjoying a little bit of a lead thanks to that AK advantage. Okay, no one right. missed on that build up here. Which I would argue is one of the harder parts of the map. There's going to be another one of those coming up pretty soon, so... Uh, we don't have to wait for too long for any potential misses to happen. Yeah, but where are they going to come from? That's the question. It's it's question that uh, France does not want to answer, but if they do, it's going to be Musty. He is going to be the second to break for their team. He's going to be the third to break overall. That's going to be advantage Finland now, but Ataraxia trades it right on back over. Little damage done. The lead, just about 100,000 points. But there goes Snorlax as well. Bullets trades it back. But that is advantage Finland. Bullets had broken earlier on. Zepe and Hades still up there. And there goes Musty as well. Finland looking to run away with this one into the last quarter of the map. That lead is going to grow. Just Justman and the Poon with the combos for France trying to keep it alive. But this is going Finland's way. Barring a miss from Hades or Zepe. And the Poon and Snorlax both break. That might just seal the deal. That may well be the upset set and done and dusted. Hades with a late break, though it's not quite over yet. It's all on the shoulders of Zeppe in the last few combo, but it's a couple hundred thousand points. I believe Finland should have this in the bag unless something really tragic happens. Yeah, and the ending is going to be uh, way calmer, and I think that seals the deal. That's that's it. Justman and Musty with the break. Zeppe holds. Ladies and gentlemen, an upset is at our hands. Finland, 5-3 over France. That is back-to-back -back wins by Nordic countries. Sweden and Finland both getting the job done, but Finland with a resounding upset over massively favored France in this matchup, just putting on a clinic. Great performance from everyone on their roster, putting that match together. A very well-done job, and Finland will be advancing onward into the round of 16 and they will get a Japan team that barely scraped by Malaysia. So they've got now a chance to look at maybe a quarterfinal here in a few weeks. You never know if they can keep this kind of performance up. The sky's the limit for this team. I mean, genuinely, if you look at Finland, they came in prepared and they came in and executed perfectly on the day. And that's pretty much all that matters. They knew their own strengths. They took advantage of it. They performed. On, on their own strengths as well. You, I mean, if you take a 70-30, there's still a 30% chance of losing on, on a lot of maps, even if you're favored. And Finland made it 30%, almost a 0% on a lot of these maps. And just great job around by Finland here. Yeah, that was very well done from them. Shout out to uh, top match costs to Hades by a pretty solid margin, in for a lot of maps, performing quite well. France is going to have some uh, some thinking to do as they drop down to that loser's bracket. That's going to be uh, a bit of a surprise for them, and they'll have their work cut out, I believe, going forward. But man, just the biggest props to Finland. Like you said, they came in with a clear strategy. You could tell, I mean, they, they had solid picks on that early break point. They had very solid picks in mind, and they executed on them well. And they are rewarded with the W in this match.